Hello friends, welcome to another video from Edithuria World in our logical reasoning series and today we are going to discuss course of action. Now in course of action, you will be presented with a statement and this will be followed by a couple of alternative solutions. Our job is to select the appropriate solution for the problem. Okay. Now. Uh, the solution that we select has to be evaluated along certain parameters and it should satisfy those parameters. So if we ask the question how to select an appropriate course of action, we need to evaluate it along three lines of logic. First one, the solution suggested has to be relevant to the problem. That's the most important thing. Number two, it should be of an appropriate magnitude. And number three, it should have a desirable outcome and it should not create any new problems. Okay, this is very, very important. Now, we will uh, go in detail into these three uh, aspects. But before we do that, just to understand what we are talking about, let us take a look at one example. So this is your question, Okay, the first example. So, the statement is that the sale of a particular product has gone down considerably causing great concern to the company. So, we know that there is a company which is very concerned because the sale of one of its products has gone down and they want to rectify this problem. So, to solve this, two alternative solutions have been suggested. We will call them courses of action. The first alternative tells us that the company should make a proper study of rival products in the market and the second course of action tells us that the price of the product should be reduced and quality improved. Now our job is to assess which of these is a valid course of action. It may be true that the first course of action is a good one whereas the second one is not a very desirable solution or the second course of action is valid uh, where the first one is not. It's also possible that either of them can be implemented but there is no need to implement both of them okay either one of them will solve the problem another possibility is that neither one of them is a good solution and there's one final possibility that both of them are good solutions okay? that means both of them can be implemented at the same time so now keeping these points in mind let us evaluate number one the company should make a proper study of rival products in the market. First one, is it relevant to the problem? Of course it is relevant to the problem. Uh, we have an issue that the sale of a particular product has gone down. So it makes sense for me to study the rival products in the market so that uh, I'll come to know what other companies are doing that uh, you know my company is not doing properly. Is it of the same magnitude? Yes, it is of the same magnitude. Okay, It is a problem concerning the sale of a product and I am trying to solve that problem. Number three, does it create any undesirable outcomes or does it lead to any new problem? Conducting a study should not lead to any new problems for the company. There does not seem to be any downside to taking this course of action. So I can safely say that this is a good solution. The company should make a proper study of rival products in the market. Talking about number two, the price of the product should be reduced and the quality should be improved. Now, is this relevant to the problem? Yes, it is relevant to the problem. I have a problem of uh, diminishing sales of a particular product and if I reduce the price and improve the quality, it may solve my problem. Is it of the same magnitude? Yes, it is. Okay, I have a problem of product sales and I am trying to solve it. Does it create any undesirable outcomes? Well, maybe. Maybe. Because I am uh, reducing the price of the product straight away without considering that uh, there may be nothing wrong with the pricing of the product in the first place. It may simply be a distribution problem. Maybe my product is not being displayed properly in the shop. 
or my product is not reaching the places on time and therefore the customers are buying products of other companies uh, it could be any reason why my sales are diminishing so it does not make sense for me to immediately reduce the price of my product maybe after conducting the study i realize that the pricing is just fine and uh, i can sell the product at the same price similarly it does not make sense to improve the quality of the product straight away maybe there is nothing wrong with the quality of the product if i rectify the problem identified in the study it will sell just fine it can even be the case that my quality is actually better than the competitors but because of a distribution problem or because of a problem of not displaying the product properly at the shop it is not selling so without evaluating the reason behind the dip in sales of this product i should not blindly reduce the price and increase the quality of the product okay it may lead to undesirable outcome such as reduced profits uh, fewer repeat sales so these problems may arise okay so after evaluating both the courses of action i see that only the first one follows okay only the first one follows so i'll go ahead and i'll select option a now let's come back to the three points that we were talking about how to select an appropriate course of action it should be relevant to the problem so we saw that the problem is talking about a dip in the sales of a particular product so my solution should address that problem okay my solution should not uh, talk about reducing the cost of inputs okay because the problem is not the cost of the product the problem is that it is not selling enough second one it should be of an appropriate magnitude let's take an example okay uh, there is a problem of uh, cholera in a city okay there is a huge outbreak of cholera uh, people are dying because cholera is a water borne disease so the local civic body uh, decides to inform people or rather to educate them that they should install water purifiers at home and beyond that they don't do anything so uh, is my solution of an appropriate magnitude here i would say not really because the problem is imminent it requires immediate action merely suggesting to people that they should install water purifiers at home may lead to cleaner drinking water in the long run but it will not solve the problem of the cholera epidemic so that is not an appropriate solution uh, so basically for a very big problem i am taking a very small step in this case it may also be the other way around okay, so for example uh, a child misbehaves in class uh, he was talking to his friends when the teacher told everybody to concentrate on their textbooks and uh, a disciplinary action was uh, taken on the child uh, by the school and uh, the parents were asked to transfer the child to military school again is it of an appropriate magnitude not really okay uh, it was not that big a problem and sending the child to military school for uh, talking in class seems a little extreme so we should keep in mind that it has to be of an appropriate magnitude we cannot have very small solutions for very big problems because they will be ineffective at the same time we should not have uh, extreme solutions for very minor problems okay, because that will lead to unnecessary waste of time and resources and third one it should have a desirable outcome and it should not create any new problems so for example uh, let's say the government sees that income tax revenue was very low in the previous financial year so they decide to increase the rate of income tax okay if you increase the rate of income tax uh, maybe the tax collected per person will increase but there's a high likelihood that uh, because of the increased rate of tax people will find uh, ways to evade tax so a better solution might have been to offer tax incentives to people you know, to reward them for paying their taxes maybe give them certain rebates on tax and uh, give them some benefits for declaring all the tax due which will encourage more people to file taxes because now there is not enough uh, motivation to evade so uh, again um, increasing the tax rate had some undesirable outcome 
so we need to keep these things in mind okay the solution has to be relevant to the problem it should be of an appropriate magnitude and uh, it should have a desirable outcome and it should not create any new problems okay, so these are the three things that uh, are the hallmarks of a good solution now let's go ahead and solve a few problems so again in the first example we will select option a as we have already discussed okay only the first course of action is a valid one uh, the second one is not let's take a look at another problem in this one problem num number 2 the statement says that the asian development bank has approved a 100 million dollar loan to finance a project to construct a coal port by madras port trust okay so uh, it's not exactly a problem a statement has been made that the madras port trust has received the 100 million dollar loan from the asian development bank to construct a coal port okay so a couple of courses of action have been suggested about what to do in future number one india should use financial assistance from other international financial organizations to develop such ports in other places so a suggestion has been made that since uh, india has secured financing from asian development bank they should also approach other banks to get financing for other such projects in uh, other ports there seems to be nothing wrong with this course of action okay it is a suggestion without any drawbacks so we can consider this as a valid course of action and the second one india should not seek such financial assistance from the international financial agencies this course of action is not backed by any reason it's a mere statement that india should not seek such financial assistance so this is not a valid course of action uh, the reasons are number one it does not give a proper cause and effect relationship okay any good course of action will always be backed by reason if it is not backed by reason then it is not a good course of action okay so always be on the lookout for logic in courses of action okay uh, if i implement this course of action is it logical uh, or if the course of action is telling me not to seek help from any agency what is the reason behind saying that is there any logical basis for which they are saying it's not advisable to seek assistance from these agencies in this case uh, they have not cited any such reason whatsoever so again i will select the first one first course of action which is valid and the second course of action is not valid there are a few more pointers uh, which basically tell us how to suggest how to select an appropriate course of action and how to avoid more importantly how to avoid incorrect courses of action so how do i remove weak solutions number 1 these kind of statements which are not supported by any logic number 2 statements which use only examples okay statements which use only examples and number 3 statements which use only comparisons statements which use only comparisons so for example if i say that the congress and the bjp have agreed on x y and z policies so they are also likely to agree on the policy being discussed in parliament tomorrow it is a fallacious argument because i am not talking about the various policies that the two parties disagreed upon and uh, this policy may be completely different in nature so just because they have agreed on three policies does not mean that they have to necessarily agree on this particular policy also okay so these are some examples of weak uh, statements okay weak courses of action so we should uh, keep an eye out for them and we should eliminate them okay number 1 uh, the ones that don't follow any logic they are mere statements without any backing number 2 uh, arguments made using only examples and only similarities if the arguments which use similarities and examples are backed by a reason and after that a similarity has been given or after that an example has been given it may be a good solution we will not uh, discard that but only on the basis of similarities and examples a strong argument is difficult to make 
So again in this case, I'll go ahead and I'll select option A. Okay, that only the first course of action is correct. So these are the uh, various parameters that I need to keep in mind when I'm evaluating these courses of action. And in the remaining part of the video, we will take a look at various examples, okay, in which uh, we will be selecting from among these five options. And we will logically evaluate the alternative courses of action suggested. So let's take a look at example 3. Now the statement says that uh, Doordarshan is concerned about the quality of its programs, particularly in view of stiff competition it is facing from Star and other satellite TV channels and is contemplating various measures to attract talent for its programs. Okay. So the problem here is that Doordarshan is worried about competition from Star and other satellite TV channels because uh, they are not able to attract talent that means artists for their programs so they are contemplating uh, what they should do because they are worried about the quality of the programs course of action number one says that in an effort to attract talent Doordarshan has decided to revise its fee structure for the artists does this course of action pertain to the problem in other words is it relevant to the problem of course it is the problem is that uh, they are basically trying to find out various ways by which they can attract people, they can attract talent to work in the channel. And uh, if you revise the fee structure, if you pay the artists more, they are more likely to do that. Number two, is it of um, a similar magnitude? Is it uh, sufficient to solve the problem? Yes, it seems sufficient. Okay, if you revise the fee structure and uh, pay the artists more, they are more likely to come and work for you. And uh, does it cause any undesirable outcome? Uh, there does not seem to be any undesirable outcome of uh, paying artists more in order to attract them. Because at the current fee that they are being paid, uh, they are not coming to work for the channel. So maybe if the fee structure is revised for the artists, they will be motivated enough to work for the channel. So the first course of action is valid. Okay, it's a it's a good solution. Second one, the fee structure should not be revised until other electronic media also revise it. Uh, this does not seem to be relevant because the problem is specific to dual version. The problem is not with other electronic media. So there is not really any need for other electronic media to revise their uh, fee structure. Uh, moreover, if uh, Doordarshan revises its fee structure when everybody else is also doing it, then relatively there is not much of a difference. Okay, they have revised the fee structure, but so has everybody else. Uh, so it will not give enough of a motivation to artists because relatively Doordarshan will still be paying lesser compared to other other channels. So they should go ahead and they should revise their fee structure now without waiting for other electronic media to revise it. So once again, uh, the first course of action is a good one and we will select option A as the correct choice. So as you see friends there are various parameters which help us in evaluating courses of action and in the second part of this video we will look at more statements and we will try to analyze different types of problems and we will see how to come upon good solutions which solve the problems and how to eliminate weak solutions which do not. So do join me in part 2 of this video, see you then.